Back to earth and participation in politics by young people also seems alien. Is it a problem? At the Battle of Ideas, World Bites attended a contentious debate. Here are some of the speakers' introductory remarks. The, the question, can youth engagement uh, save democracy? It can't alone save democracy, but without youth engagement, the future of democracy is by definition doomed. But this is not simply uh, about, for instance, getting people to the polling booths. It is about getting people sufficiently engaged that they are asking the questions, have we got the politics we need for the 21st century? It seems to me simply untenable to suggest that we should not teach our young people through our curriculum about how that democracy works and it is equally untenable that we shouldn't require of our schools that in different ways they model democracy, that in different ways they allow and enable young people uh, to engage in democracy. Uh, so we need citizenship rich schools, we need strong curricula in this area, good democracy education, I'm not fussy about what it's called, that's the challenge as I see it. There's no point in voting in loads of parts of this country because your vote doesn't matter. So one issue is about our whole system of democracy, which is the first past the post versus um, the proportional system. But with only a third of people between 18 and 24 um, saying they're absolutely certain to vote, um, they say they're the least informed group, and they only a third of people aged 18 to 24 say they're even interested in politics. Voting and politics has to matter, and our people have to care. Now, every, every week, loads of young people vote for the X Factor or Strictly Come Dancing and so on and so forth. And then people say, well, why can't they be motivated to, to vote in elections once every four or five years? And i actually not so sure it's the actual subject, although I'm sure that's part of it. I think it's something to do with the way we vote, because if you could sit on your bum and press a button or ring a phone... Um, then I think people would vote. I think it's just going to a bo voting booth is somewhat out of, out of the olden days. And we're lazy. <laughs> That's the other thing. Can't be bothered to go to the voting booth. Next, it's us politicians. We have an awful lot to answer for as the reason why people don't engage in democracy. Our behaviour is awful. I obviously exclude myself from any of that. Um, we have, we, you know, you need a political identity, a distinct a distinction from the others and you need to actually believe in things and be passionate about things so how do we stir you up not by our behavior at prime minister's questions i think that is the greatest waste of public money you can imagine we have to stop the stereotypical macho and i use the word advisedly political game don't be autonomous talk plain english and more than anything, don't demonise young people. How, why would you want to get involved with a group of people who spend their lives slagging you off, quite frankly? I don't see a particular problem with youth disengagement. I see a problem with disengagement. I don't know why we talk about youth disengagement. I, I would reject that. Secondly, the focus on youth engagement is a distraction from the real problem. And the real problem is the absence of any meaning or purpose in politics. Citizenship lessons will not solve the problem of low voter turnout. They will not solve the problem of disengagement. There's a real problem when you look to things like citizenship education or youth forums or consultative forums or anything else. What happens is you turn schools into something they're not. You end up relocating what's a political problem into an educational issue. I'm a teacher. I teach. I believe in subject knowledge. Schools teach and educate children. It is not their problem to solve low voter turnout, political disconnection, or rising levels of cynicism towards politics. It's the fault of politicians, not teachers, that people don't vote. I think that our policymakers are starting to regard the curriculum as principally a political instrument to change attitudes and behaviour of young people. Public health officials are demanding more classroom time on healthy eating and obesity this week. Others want more sex relationships in, discussed in the classroom. This year, the government's made it compulsory that we teach Britishness, even though they don't know how to define Britishness. Environmental campaigners want us to talk more about global warming and teach more about sustainability. We're not being asked to address um, the kind of voter turnout, etc., etc., etc. It's a joke. It's stupid. Get real. Let's talk about the emperor's new clothes. This creates two problems. Number one, you will not solve the problem of declining levels of participation and disengagement in the classroom 
You will not do that, full stop. That's a job for the political sphere. Second thing, you end up destroying the very thing that was decent about schools, which is that you, you destroy the ability of a teacher to actually teach his class subject knowledge. What you do is you hollow out the time and the content given to subjects to make way for these new external demands which have been placed on teachers to deliver, like citizenship and increasing levels of participation. See young people, if they want to be active, they'll go and be active, and they'll do so regardless of the political institutions. When I was 16, I was out throwing petrol bombs at the British Army and building barricades. I thought I was engaged in a revolution. That was 1981, the hunger strike. You might not agree with what I was doing, but that's what I was doing. You look at the age of people in Tiananmen Square when they were massacred. They were young teenagers. You look at the average age of the leadership of the Bolsheviks in the 1917 revolution. They were 25. Many of their members were 15 and 16. You look at the young people in America in Obama's campaign right now and look at the age of them. Where there's contestation, where there's vision, where there's something going on, there's not a problem about youth engagement. Let's not bastardise politics further by trying to create and set up a false discussion about how do we create and promote youth participation. This is a con job. This is about our political leaders lacking any sense of legitimacy. They feel isolated. Therefore, they create a debate to try to reconnect with the people. And that's called, let's find ways for young people to participate. <laughs>